Welcome to the Community United Presbyterian Church. Uh, Donna, you have some visitors there. Would you like to introduce? I have my cousin, Jim, and his wife, Margaret, and they're from South Carolina, Greenville. Greenville, so, y'all, you know, they had something in common with the um, pastor. And they are coming, and we're just having lunch today, and they're like, oh, so. We're very happy to have them here. They are moms, youngest brothers, beautiful conscience. Well, welcome. Safe travels. Stan's got you some popcorn. <laughs> so if you don't get enough for lunch, you can get, get that going. All right, are there any other announcements? Okay, I can go through here on the bulletin. Uh, this is the day of Pentecost. We are celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit on this special day. Everyone is invited to the birthday party of the church following fellowship this morning. Pastor Kristen will be on leave from Wednesday, June 8th to Wednesday, June 15th. If you have any pastoral needs during that time, contact the church office or a session member. The First Arabic Presbyterian Church is hosting their 50th anniversary celebration this afternoon at 4 o'clock at the Cottage Grove Church. We are invited to come for a unique worship experience in Arabic and English. The Reverend Dr. J. Herbert Nelson II will be the guest speaker. The service will be followed by a time of celebration, including um, sharing festivities of sharing, singing, food, and fellowship. We will be honored for the financial support that we've provided to this ministry. Save the date, Ark, who goes there? This year's Vacation Bible School at CUPC, the weekly event will be held on Wednesdays from 5 to 7, starting June 29th to July 27th. A light meal will be served. Children's four-year-old four -year -old through fifth grade may be registered by contacting the church office. Um, and if the, if the major leaders have been have signed up and uh, we just need some uh, other little volunteers and if you want to help please contact Eileen in your bulletin you can see the other activities around town and the missions to consider and uh, that's all I got we do have a birthday here today should we sing happy birthday to the young lady in the back row <laughs> It's a minute for mission, and it's not Eileen. Yay! <laughs> We're giving her a day off. So, I have, we thought today would be a good day to celebrate the fact that we raised our $5,000 for the arts project. It's okay, Larry, go ahead. There's a special video I want you to watch, and Larry's gonna go ahead and play that for us. friends at Community United Presbyterian Church in Hartford, Iowa. I'm Bill McConnell. I'm interim director of the Presbyterian Giving Catalog. And with me is your mission specialist, Deidre May. Hey, I'm Deidre. I am your mission specialist, so you can reach out to me for anything at all that you need. If I don't know the answer, I'll find the right one for you. Well, we are here to say a, a huge thank you to you for your work and for your support of the Presbyterian Giving Catalog. We're especially excited about your decision to support a farm bundle and to challenge yourselves over the course of a year to fund that bundle and then by actually meeting your challenge in four months. It's exciting when we all get together, when we bring our small gifts together to make a large impact. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your prayers. God bless you. 
Thanks again. And the best part about this check is it's a dry erase. So when we pick the next project, we can just erase this and put in the new amounts. So it'll be great. Um, but when I contacted them to let them know that we had finished this already, um, I talked to Deidre, who you saw in the video, and she was so incredibly excited. And she's like, OK, wait a minute. She's like, how big is your church? And I said, we have 75, well, I was wrong, or 74, on the roll. I said, she's like, and you were, she said, and we're not talking about the small farm bundle. The, the, I was like, no, the big one, the big $5,000. And we did it in four months. And she's like, that's amazing. And so that was a surprise to me, too. Friday, I got this email with this video that she and Bill had put together at the, in the Louisville offices. But the other thing that's going to happen is they do a special series online. And so when I'm in Louisville in a couple weeks for GA, I'm going to, our church is going to be the, the, the topic of the day. Um, I joked and said we may become the new giving catalog poster children here pretty soon. So <laughs> you may see us in all sorts of places. But um, they were so incredibly excited at what we were able to do. Um, and the fact that I, I have a feeling not a lot of churches, especially our size, have, have tackled this. So um, kudos to all of you. And I am so incredibly excited. So we're going to take some pictures after worship because they really wanted to see the ark downstairs too. They wanted to see the animals and, and all that good stuff. So, um, so yay and, and yay us. And once they have the money and they figure out where it's going to go, then they should let us know so that we can hopefully you know, at least get some pictures, maybe figure out if there's other needs that community has and, and other ways we can help. So yay. Yay us! <laughs> All right, will you please rise if able and join me to, with the call to worship? Come Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. The opening hymn is when morning guides the sky.
Holy One, ignite us with a fiery passion for your mission in the world today. Make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us to share your love in the world. In this love and abundance, we come to celebrate your harvest, a harvest bearing the fruits of the Spirit within us. Show us how to use these gifts as we listen for your truth as we come to you in prayer. Lord of patience and persistence, we live in a broken and shattered world. All around us we see great evidence of hatred and alienation. We cannot help but observe the alienation of people from one another. We create devices to separate rather than unite, to divide rather than come in hope. Forgive us our sins. These sins cause such division and hurt. Remind us today that the disciples too live in a fearful world and that one day they came to them as they sat huddled in fear and you empowered them. You gave them hearts and courage and faith. Please bring on us the same hearts that we may serve you. Bring peace and hope to our world. In the name of Christ, we offer this prayer. Amen. Do not be afraid. Our comforter and advocate has come. Rejoice in the knowledge that all is forgiven. People of the Spirit, listen. The wind that drives the heaven, the winds that soar above and be beyond us all, unite, unifies us in God's love. Keep the Spirit's flame alight within your heart. Await the new birth in Christ that is promised to all. Please be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? And then from the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of all our hearts. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And so here we are at Pentecost. We're finally at the last Sunday of our narrative lectionary year. Um, when I'm back in two weeks, we're going to start on a summer sermon series, completely separated from what we've done these last nine months. I love Pentecost. And it wasn't something I remember really celebrating as a kid, but I think part of it is, I mean, I like red, but um, I was laughing this morning. The, the set of stoles I got when I got ordained, the green one's really showing its age because it gets worn all the time. And the white one I was looking at going, it might have been cleaned one too many times. It's starting to look dingy. But this red one is like crisp because we don't do red very often. You know, basically an ordination now and then and Pentecost. And I mean, this sucker's like fresh out of the, I don't think I've ever cleaned it because why? I think I've worn it 12 times in the last 10 years. It's a day that we we lift up and we make a big deal out of, but there's part of me that wonders, why don't we do this more during the year? With the importance of the Holy Spirit, why aren't we doing this more? And, and lifting up the power of the Spirit. Is it because it's hard to put into words sometimes? Is it because it's, it's difficult to, to, to wrangle it all together? But I think Paul does a magnificent job of talking about what's really important about the Spirit. And these final instructions he's giving, he's, you know, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. That's important. I mean, these are people who are in tough circumstances. Of course they were. You know, the, the Jewish folks in the synagogues are against them. The Romans probably aren't too happy with them. The, the native Greeks in Philippi probably aren't too happy with them either. So they have a lot against them. And it's coming from a man who's in prison with a capital charge on him. A man who's probably going to die very soon. And he's telling them, rejoice in the Lord. Because our joy and our happiness are two very different things. And too often we confuse and conflate them, try to make them one thing. I mean, think about all the ways we talk about the word happy. You know, happy birthday and happy anniversary. And, 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 it, and they say it more in England than we do here, but it's happy Christmas, not Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. It's, it's just, it's meant to be a greeting of, of affection and, you know, have a good time, have a great day. That's about what it means. But we talk about happiness, you know, our own personal happiness and the hap our happiness with our career. It's, it's almost become like the word love. We use it in so many different ways that it, it, it kind of loses some of its meaning because it can mean so many things now that it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, really, you could define happy as being not sad. OK, that doesn't really clear it up. I think where we get it wrong is so often we want happiness, that elation. You know, you think about it, that you felt when you were a little kid over something, and the excitement. And um, I still re remember one Christmas. And it was Rob, of all people, who's usually the curmudgeonly one, who, for some reason that morning, he was in a great mood. And anything anybody else opened, he's like, oh my gosh, that's the best gift. That's just what you wanted. Like, all morning. And it kind of actually got annoying. Because we're like, tone it down a notch. It's like six, seven, tone it down. You know. But just that, that unbridled happiness and cheerfulness and elation, and all the other words we use. But it's fleeting. I mean, it goes away. That doesn't last. It's not meant to last. It's just a moment when we can look back and go, that was a great day. That was a great moment. But it's not, we're not supposed to be that way forever. It's kind of like
like what they talk about when, when people get married, that the honeymoon phase, as they call it, where everything's wonderful and everyone's in love and isn't it grand and isn't it great? And, you know, at some point shortly thereafter, reality sets in and you're like, man, you're a grouch in the morning. Or you, could, could you, like, go brush your teeth before you get that close to me? Because, yeah, I love you, but wow, you know. Or I didn't know you were going to be this annoying when we were just trying to, like, clean something or do a home improvement project. That's usually when my marriage goes on the skids, it's home improvement projects. Um, it, it's just like, come on. But we're never meant to be, yay, all the time. Life doesn't work that way. Happiness is ephemeral. It, it just fades. It goes. The smallest thing can upset it. But then there's joy. And joy is different. Joy is a, it's a deep fulfillment within us that, that doesn't require you know, other people necessarily. Joy is about a relationship with God. It's about something much deeper within us to be fulfilled. There's a longing there for joy. The problem is we too often fill it with happiness, which doesn't work. Joy is about something so much deeper. And it's not an accident that Paul's telling them right at the end, remember to rejoice, to be joyful people. Just as I often harp on being thankful people, we're also supposed to be joyful people. There's, there's a difference. You know, happiness is something you pursue. It's something you hunt for and look for and do things to try to generate. But joy is something else altogether. Joy is that, that longing deep within us to be in the presence of God. That's, and when we find it, that's what joy is. When we've, we've found the place where we can fill that longing to be with God. And joy brings really different things. I mean, happiness brings excitement and, and fun and, and everybody's laughing. And joy brings patience, which tells me I'm probably not as joy-filled as I need to be because I don't have enough patience. You know, it's, Paul even gets into it here, that we're to be patient. It doesn't mean inactive. It doesn't mean resigned to our fate. It just means we need to be willing to wait, that sometimes patience is required it's part of that longing, that, that waiting, looking for God. Paul also reminds us that joy and prayer are, are the answer to some of the, the anxiety we feel about who we are and where we belong and, and who God is and where we find God. Because once we do we're in a much different place. We're looking for different things. We become different people. And we know prayer is not just a simple catch-all to cover everything. It's not just the laundry list we ask God for, but that, that deep-seated thanksgiving and, and supplication, the asking, the, the spending time in conversation with God. It changes us. Just as the joy we find in it changes us. And joy also brings us peace. And I don't mean just absence from conflict, because that's not peace. That's just absence from conflict. Peace is a whole other realm. Peace is so incredibly complete when we're at peace with who we are, when we're at peace with where we are, when we're at peace with the world around us and what it means. Isaiah tells us that we find that only in God, 
that there's no earthly way to get there. Only through God can we truly find peace within our souls. So where does all of this take us? It takes us right back to Acts, to the coming of the Holy Spirit, because the only way we get there is through the giving of the Holy Spirit. That was necessary. That had to happen for Paul to be able to write this. The coming of the Spirit, the changing of everything. Everything. Because now God is no longer this remote figure far away. The Spirit of God is here with all of us all the time. We have simply to just recognize it. It's here. Always been here that power that brings joy, that brings peace, is here. But judging by the state of our world and how little joy we see and how little peace there is, is it any wonder that people are filled with anxiety and filled with fear and filled with hatred and pride and so many other things? It's always a, a tough battle to be able to look within and look to God when the world around wants us to do the complete opposite. Because, you know, if we just buy one more thing or travel one more place, then we'll be happy. I mean, listen sometime if you're the type that will actually sit through commercials, because so many of us mute and fast forward, I know, I'm bad. How many times in a commercial it will say that this will change your life? Really? You're going to change my life with a new kitchen appliance? I doubt it. What you're going to do is create one more thing in my kitchen that I'm going to have to dust because I bought it and then I, you know, used it for six weeks, and then now it's sitting there. Um, cue my Instapot, because that's one of them. Though I will say, I got one of the air fryers, and that sucker gets constant use. So that one actually kind of did change my life. I'm just saying just a little bit. Um, it did change the arrangement of my kitchen. I'll give it that, because it did do that. Because I have to have a dedicated spot for it now, because it gets used every day. So... I'm not saying that the world isn't wonderful and that we don't have fabulous things right at our fingertips, because we do. But they're not going to make me happy. Sure, they make my life a little easier. And when it's really warm out, I'd much rather heat up that little air fryer than crank up the whole oven. So in that regard, yes, I might be happier for half an hour because my house is not quite so warm in July. But that's fleeting. Because, you know, January is coming, which is when I usually clean the oven because then it heats the whole house up that day and it's gorgeous. It's ephemeral. It doesn't last. They want us to think it does because they need us to keep spending our dollars on their stuff, which is just stuff at the end of the day. It's just stuff. It doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring peace. We run around our lives looking for joy, searching for peace. When it was right here all along, where it's always been, where it always will be. And so that day of Pentecost let it be a reminder to us that our joy, our belonging, our peace is right where it's always been. In the place it's always been. It's never left. Even when the red pyramids go away and we hide them over here in the, in the side room for a while, the spirit didn't leave. It isn't gone. It's here always right where it's always been. 
leading us right where it's always been leading us, to God, to joy and to peace and to prayer. And so in that, let us pray. Let us take a moment together to be with the Spirit and to pray. Dear God, on this day of Pentecost, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for all that it brings to us, all the ways that it guides and leads us. We give you thanks for the gifts of the Spirit. We give you thanks for the blessings of the Spirit, for the power of the Spirit for the beauty and the the majesty and the mystery of the Spirit. As it feeds our souls, as it challenges us to new things, as it brings us ever closer to you, may we be changed. May we find joy and find peace in spite of all the anxiety and fear and hatred in the world may we find joy and find peace and find a way to share it find a way to spread it far and wide find a way to make it known everywhere. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, today is the the Pentecost offering. If you haven't had a chance to take part in that, there's still some envelopes in the back uh, that's being collected up through today. I have my prayer here. Um, That's one of the the four special offerings that our denomination does, and 40% of what we collect we're going to use on a a special project here locally um, on the the birthday bags that are going to be part of the the local food pantry here for, for kids to be able to help celebrate a birthday. So many thanks to all of you for all the ways that you serve, for all the ways that you share and help. Um, This is a great day of celebration for our church. It's a wonderful day to be able to to share who we are and what's important to us and how we're trying to make the world a better place and share the love of Jesus in all the ways that we can. And so let's have a, a brief word of prayer, of dedication of all that we've done. All that we have is from you, O God. We give to you with with grateful hearts, sacrificing what we can so that all may share in your abundance. Take these offerings. May they help to share the good news of the gospel. Bread for the hungry, water for the thirsty, seeds for the farmer, books for school children, shelter for those who have none. With cheerful hearts, we bring our offerings to you, O Lord. We watch and hope for your new creation. We await your purposes come to fruition. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's stand. Let's sing together the doxology. Please join me in the prayer. Precious Lord, 
We hunger for the light and strength that only the Spirit can bring. Feed us and strengthen us as we learn to feed others. Fill us with the breath of your Spirit as you search our hearts. Take our lives as proof of our faithfulness. Take our gifts as proof of our love. Use them to your purpose here on earth. Amen. Well, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Merciful God, you know the deep needs of the world. Trusting in your loving kindness, we, we bring before you our laments and our hopes. We pray for your church around the world. May we be witnesses to your generous grace in, in every place on earth. We pray for, for Dylan as he looks toward his future, as he seeks a possible call to be a missionary. May he be a witness around the world to your grace in all the places of the earth. We pray for those who live with violence in their communities and in their homes. Protect the vulnerable, uphold the fearful, heal the wounded. We pray for those in Ames and in Buffalo and in Uvalde and in so many other places. We pray, pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by violence. We pray that your spirit will sustain them and that they will see your grace. We pray for those who go to bed hungry each night. We pray for bread to eat, seeds to plant, and hope to sustain. We lift up the, the offerings that not just we, but so many in so many churches have made. May they help to alleviate some of the suffering in the world. We pray for those who weep and those who mourn. Uphold them, surround them, comfort them. Restore their hope and help them find joy. We pray for Greg's family and Chris's family and the Jerry and Dorothy's family. We pray for Donovan. We pray for Tiffany and Dave and their family. We pray for Charlotte's friend. For those whose needs are known only to you, Lord, we lift in prayer. For those we love, we give you thanks for the reunions that are happening, for the vacations and the trips and the rest and the retreats. For all these things, we give you thanks. Gather up the prayers of your people, O God. Grant justice to your people and peace to our lands as we wait and watch and work and hope for your new creation. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come to our time of communion. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. Your spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation. You breathed into us the breath of life and set us on the earth to praise and to serve you. When we lost our way, you called us back, then sent your own son to save us. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. By your spirit, you name him beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, to proclaim freedom from the bondage of sin and befriend the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you've given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup. Unite us with Christ and with all who trust in him, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Set our hearts aflame with a love for the truth and the desire to do your will. Make our witness to Christ burn brightly and keep us faithful until Christ comes in final victory. And we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. All glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and poured it out and said, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And now I invite you all to, to come forward. We'll start with, with this side, I think, and come around. Um, as we've been doing, you'll be given a piece of bread. You can take a cup. You can either take it here or take it back with you. Um, and this table is, of course, always open to all. This is the table of Jesus Christ. It's not a Presbyterian table. All those who accept Jesus as their Savior are welcome to join us in this meal. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And now let's stand and sing our closing hymn. <laughs> And now hear these words. You go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being there. Christ lives in you and has something he wants to do through you wherever you are. Believe this and go in the grace and the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.